Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak FX. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this awesome 3D timeline. Now, this video came as a request from a Flatpak FX crew member. If you are a crew member, you can download this project file. If you're also interested in joining the crew membership to download the project files and also request your own custom tutorials, then follow the link down in the description below. But I'm gonna show you how to set this project file up using basically these holders. Now this works with photos and videos. So basically once we've set up these holders, you can basically just drag and drop different things straight in here. So I'm gonna create a new composition here. This can be whatever you want. I'm just gonna call this one my main composition. Now all I did to create the holders was I simply just took whatever that main composition was and just duplicated it. And then you can just rename it to basically like your holder one. Now I've already done this and created five different holders. Now when I open up those holders, basically they're gonna be blank when you first open them up but I just simply added some images in here. Now, part of this download is that I've included these images as part of the download. But basically, if you just drag and drop your image straight into this holder, you can scale it up. Then I also just added like a gray box. You don't have to do that, but basically all I did was I just created a new solid. You can set this color to be whatever you like. And then I just grab my mask tool with that selected and you just draw out basically a box, set that to be subtract and that's how you create that outline effect. So it just kind of creates this bit of a border. Now to my images, all I did was I just added some effects. Obviously this depends on the eclipse that you're gonna be using. If you're using photos or videos, you can add a little bit of a color grade, but I just did this just to change the color of the photos that I was using but it doesn't really matter whatever you use. As I said, you can drag videos into these holders. It doesn't matter. You can, as long as they're full screen, we're just gonna be using them as a holder. So the great thing about this is as I drag a new one into this holder, the main timeline will automatically update with all of that new content. So I've done this basically five times to create all of these different holders. And once I've got those holders, what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to drag all five of those straight onto my timeline here. And this is into my main composition and I'm just gonna scale these down. Now what I can do is I can start to basically just position these something like this. So this is what my final frame is sort of gonna look like. Now if I select all those, make them 3D, what I'm going to do is I want to basically animate them from that point. So I want them all to basically finish at that. So I'm gonna hit P and then S, create a scale, hit U to bring up those keyframes. So basically I want them all to finish at that point. And if I bring my playhead back here a little bit in time, I'm sort of working backwards, but what I'm going to do is basically just kind of move these out like this and sort of line them up. Now you can sort of off center these a little bit, something like that. And the other thing, if I select all of those, I can scale them down because I want them all to basically fit inside this main viewer. So if I select all those again, I can just sort of move them across. So you should basically have this sort of animation. Now the animation can be whatever you like. You can customize this later. It doesn't particularly matter. It's just, this is the particular animation that I'm using. But as I get to about here, I'm also just going to create keyframes so that those all, so they all sort of lock in place. And with this one here at the start, I want to focus on this one. So I'm going to move it back in Z space. And what I'm also going to do is add a bit of a sort of rotation here what i'll have to do is also create an orientation keyframe for that particular layer if i go back here just reset these to zero so that sort of animates forward and then to something like that now what you can also do because these other layers are not moving i can actually just delete these keyframes I hit U for that layer. Also just delete these ones on the bottom. I'm leaving the front one because I need that to sort of move into that position. But if I line my playhead up here, what I can do with these top ones, 
because these are going to be basically the top two layers, what I can do is sort of move them forward in 3D space, reposition them here, and also just kind of move them forward slightly like that. So they're sort of sitting on top of each other in three-dimensional space, something like this. Now, if you like this sort of tutorial or you're new to After Effects, then also check out my Animation Master course. There'll be a link down in the description below. And in that, I walk you through the absolute basics of After Effects, you know, how to create all sorts of different animations. So this is for people that are interested in animation and adding it into your own sort of personal projects or even work projects but you just don't know where to start. You've got an interest, you've never really used After Effects before, that course is gonna walk you through everything that you really need to know about the basics of how to use After Effects right through to creating some really cool looking animations and effects. If you're more of an intermediate user and you're more comfortable using After Effects, then check out my Animation Pro course in that I dive even deeper into all the different techniques and effects that you can create using After Effects, really make your animations stand out and take all of your work to that next level. There's links for both of these courses in the description below, as along with lots of student testimonials so you can read about their experiences going through the courses and all the information that you need to know about what is included. If you're interested in just learning more about animation or you really wanna take your work to that next level, then definitely check out Animation Master or my Animation Pro course. Now, once I've got all of those layers, what I'm gonna do is select all of them. I'm gonna pre-compose this into basically a new layer, which I can call whatever, I'm just gonna call it animation to keep track. Also going to basically activate the 3D camera. I wanna activate motion blur, and I'm also gonna hit rasterize, and this will come into effect later, but once I also go into those layers and activate all the motion blur, you're going to see why in just a minute. Now I want to basically add in a camera. So what I'm going to do is add a new camera, which is 35 mil. And to this camera, I can then start to basically just add a little bit of animation here. Something like this. And at this point here at the beginning, what I want to do is just basically using my camera tool. So I'm hitting C on the keyboard. I just want to basically move my camera to this sort of position. And then I'm gonna go across, I'm gonna copy these, paste them, because I want it to sort of stay in that position. Then I want it to basically, if I paste those same keyframes in again, I'm just gonna move across on my timeline here to maybe this image, something like that. Maybe this one I can move up slightly. And then also one last time, copy and paste those so it sort of stays in that position. Maybe move these back to match that point there. And that's looking quite good. What I can also do is I'm just going to select all of them, right click and make them easy ease. And if I go into that animation and also just select all of those keyframes, I'm hitting you to bring up all those keyframes, right click, Create Easy Ease, go back to the main composition. We should have this basically animating quite nicely now. So you can see that's a lot smoother. Now from this point, that's pretty much the main sort of animation. The main things is then I just wanna add some extra pieces over the top. So I included this image as well. I'm just using this as basically like my background. What I can do is make this 3D. And the key with this one is move it way back in 3D space. And you'll have to just kind of mess around with this adjustment to get it right. But with that in the background, I want to really create some contrast. So I need to darken that down. So I added a whole bunch of things to this. I'm gonna go through these. Basically, the first thing I did was just invert it. Now, the only reason I added the invert was because it was white. It's sort of a, a white and black at the moment. So I just needed to invert that to make it dark. And then all of these, again, you can just search for them up here under help and just drag these effects in. Next, I added a hue and saturation, drag down on that saturation to get rid of that blue and then sort of darkened it right down like this. 
And then finally, I added a bit of a CC vignette. The vignette, as you know, just kind of gives it that sort of darker edge, um, nothing too crazy there. And then from this point, it's just a matter of just kind of readjusting this. So you have to maybe scale it up to sort of get it in the right position to make sure that it's filling that background. If you don't want it to move as much, just send it further back in Z space, which is this blue arrow. Just keep dragging that further and further back. Now at the moment, you can kind of see everything really clearly. We want to draw that eye, you know, the focus of the, the viewer into wherever we need them to look. So what I'm going to do is take that, take that camera, come down to the camera settings or the options and turn on depth of field. Now if I drag up on the aperture, that'll create more blur. And if I create, basically holding shift, I can adjust that focal point. So you can see there, kind of creates that focal distance. You're gonna to have to create keyframes so that you can keep adjusting that point. It can hit you again to bring up those keyframes and there you go. If something's not quite right, then you'll just have to kind of readjust it here. You can hold shift to sort of make that move a little bit quicker. But basically that's all that I did there. Now, some other little things that I added over the top, that's looking quite good. But in my original here, I added just a few little things over the top just to kind of make this thing shine. So I added some, basically some rough and edges sort of uh, effects. Select basically one of those layers, come up here and just search for rough and edges. And when you add the rough and edges, these are the settings that I've ended up using if you wanna match exactly what I've done. But basically you can see it just kind of adds that little rough and edge, makes it look more like a postcard. Once you've got one that kind of looks right, just copy and paste it to all the other layers. And that's all that you have to do as far as those layers are concerned. One little final thing that I added here in my original was I added some additional little layers which were basically just like kind of cutouts of these little text items. Basically what I did is I first just dragged an image here, which is the same one as my background image. And I also then just changed the blending mode to basically like an overlay or something like that. You don't have to do that, but it just kind of helps it blend in a little bit better. If I just turn that off for the second so you can see what we're doing. I added basically just a mask. So I came up here with that layer selected, drew out a little box, and then just kind of added that in. That just cuts out an area. So I don't want the whole thing sitting over the top. I just want a part of it. I then added basically the extract function. So if you come up here again, you search for extract, you drag that down. That just removes the white part of the background. And then to that, what I did was I added basically hue and saturation dragged up on the lightness and that basically kind of creates that sort of makes it white text basically really kind of stand out and then from there you can just add it to like an overlay something like that to help it blend in now from that point now that you've got that layer you can move that around in 3d space all that i did was kind of position these in the scene and just move them forward towards the camera so they're quite blurry and if they're too much, you can just kind of hit T on the keyboard and scale them down, like as far as the opacity. But basically then you're just kind of positioning them in a sort of 3D space. It, you don't have to do this, just something else to kind of add into that scene. It kind of takes it to that next level. And again, this is what I talk a lot about in my animation courses, both Animation Master and my new course, which is Animation Pro, which is more aimed at intermediate After Effects users. You know, I talk about all of these sort of techniques in a lot more detail, these layering techniques to really make your animation stand out. Because this, if you look at it, is quite a basic animation. But if you add all of these little things in, this is really what makes your animation shine. It takes those, those animations to the next level. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you've picked up some tips and tricks you can use in your own videos. Again, if you want to download this project file, you can check out becoming a Flatpak FX crew member down in the description below. You can watch more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.